Kyle McClear's Birds Art Life is sort of a Canadian eat, pray, love in that it's an autobiographical journey, but this isn't one that starts with Montreal poutine, Toronto Maple Leafs, or BC wheat. Um, instead of the divorce that kicks off Elizabeth Gilbert's story, Kyle McClear's father recently had suffered two strokes. Now, the worst of it had passed, but she finds herself in this state of anticipatory grief, as she calls it, this constant state of suspense, waiting for something to happen, the inevitable turn for the worse. And it completely unmoors her, makes it impossible for her to write. She's detached from the entire creative process, and she finds herself sort of stalled, spinning her wheels. It was in this moment she recalls watching a documentary called 15 Reasons to Live. It's in a chapter called Meaning, where she's introduced to a musician who, after wallowing in a state of creative depression for years, quits drinking and finds peace, birding in the city. Jack Breakfast is a Toronto musician, avid birder, who photographs a lot of the birds in and around his city. And it is clear, although the photos are beautiful, that these birds are part of the Toronto they inhabit. It's all the gray, plain, and dirty places in and around the region. And they're almost willfully modest, but there is something in those photos that inspires Kyle McClear to reach out and spend a year birding with Jack Breakfast in and around Toronto, which is sort of crazy, right? But that's what this story is. So, blocked writer goes bird watching in Toronto. Not exactly the strongest of hand cells. Now, how about this? Bird's Art Life is about art and creativity, about cultivating a better type of attention to the world immediately around us without expectation or obvious payoff. Um, it's about focusing small, or as Kyle puts it, the perverse audacity of aiming tiny, of opting out of this culture of consumption, expansion, and the hurly-burly of our lives. We live on a million tiny stages, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, we are cultivating bigger, better, flashier moments in far-flung locations that showcase our beautiful excess for the sake of likes, retweets, and subscribers. We live in a moment where making something small is indicative of being somehow lacking and frail, which is crazy because we all have to start out small, especially when it comes to our creative endeavors. But Nonetheless, it can feel a little ridiculous at times, whether it is your coloring books, uh, knitting cat sweaters, bird watching, or shooting video for your tiny little booktube channel. You can feel entirely narcissistic and pointless when the rest of the world around you is such a complete and utter mess. What is the point? Guy recounts the story of her friends. They're in humanitarian mission and find themselves jailed without charges in Egypt after witnessing the massacre of peaceful protesters and sticking around to help in a makeshift hospital. And while they sit in a cold, concrete cell with an uncertain future, Kyle feels more than a little shame looking at a wood duck on a pond. Suddenly, bird watching for Kyle felt like this nature cliché, a middle-class luxury, the self-indulgent, self-delightedness to which the privileged are known for. It's that altogether familiar feeling of searing self-doubt, or is it just me? I mean, what's the point unless you manage to be a big deal? How do you justify the time spent on your little creative project of writing steampunk versions of the entire John Hughes oeuvre in light of everything else that you inevitably have on your plate? This all reminded me of an article by Mike Barbiglia called Six Tips for Making It Small in Hollywood or Anywhere. Now, you may not have heard of Mike Birbiglia, and frankly, he's okay with that. He espouses being bold enough to make stuff that's great, but small. He talks about working on a network sitcom pilot, which is, of course, the dream, the big time. Now, ultimately, the pilot wasn't picked up, and he was devastated. But looking back, that was probably the greatest thing that could have happened to his career. So instead of making things for the Hollywood gatekeepers, he ended up doing small things for This American Life and off-Broadway stuff, working outside the system, which ultimately got him into the system. So, as he puts it, America doesn't need more stuff. It needs more great stuff. And you can make that. Now, of course, Mark Birbiglia is small. It's probably a lot of ours is great. But of course, he didn't simply just arrive there. Kai was in the same boat, taking a year off to examine the world immediately around her and doing something for the sake of doing something freed her to be creative again. It's about giving yourself permission to be creative, whether it is noodling little bird sketches or your booktube channel. This isn't a self-help book, nor is it a traditional autobiography. It's far more quirky than that. Kayo scribbles on the page the eyebrows of famous people, draws sketches of people praised for their smallness, and of course there's tons of sketches of birds throughout the book. 
Um, this is more of a meandering ramble about nothing and everything. It isn't trying to impress you with deep resonant thoughts or invoke sympathy through the use of language. It's more of a chat in bookish form, and I really enjoyed it. And it's a reminder that creative endeavors can and should be appreciated for their own sake. It's the trick of paying closer attention to the world close by and celebrating it, regardless of how small it may start out being. So yes, go ahead, create that Overwatch erotic fanfic, start Koji farming, or start up that booktube channel you've been thinking about. Or I don't know, maybe read the book. I'm not the boss of you. Anyway, I hope you guys all have a great week of reading, and we will talk to you soon. Bye. Thank you.